Hickman, thank you everybody for being here this morning or this afternoon, uh, depending on where you are in the world. Um, we're up to a little bit more than 50 attendees right now, so we're really, really excited to see you all here today. Um, the subject of today's call is Peru, a bold, beautiful, and unapologetic travel destination. And if you've ever been to Peru, or if you're dreaming of Peru, I think you'll agree with me that that's a very appropriate title. Um, our guest speakers today are Elizabeth Hakim, who is the North America and UK Markets Coordinator for Prom Peru. Prom Peru is Peru's official tourism board. Erica Toro, who is Director of Sales in Peru for Belmont Hotels and Trains. And then Ilan Krem, who is in charge of sales for specialty and LGBT markets for Coltor Peru. And just a little bit of background about the three different uh, business, the three different members that are represented here today. Prom Peru, as I said, is the official export and tourism board of Peru. They joined IGLTA in 2018, marking the first time that the official Peruvian government started its outreach to LGBTQ travelers. So we're really excited to have them here today and uh, to hear what Elizabeth has to share with us. Belmont Hotels and Trains has been an IGLTA global partner since 2018. And uh, in addition to Erica, we also have Elio, who is in charge of LGBT sales for Belmont with us today. Um, and Belmont is one of the only, I think it's the only luxury travel brand in the world to have an LGBTQ advisory board that IGLTA sits on and that many of our members also sit on too. So we're very excited to have them. Um, Peru, uh, I'm sorry, Belmont is one of the first international hotel chains to bring luxury products to Peru more than 25 years ago. They have six luxury hotel properties and two luxury trains that um, Erica will be tell telling us about in just a few minutes. Cold Tour is a, a family-owned luxury inbound tour operator committed to the LGBTQ market. They've been an IGLTA member since 2016, and their values really, their values and philosophy really go hand in hand with the LGBT travelers' ever-changing needs. And last but not least, Elan, a little bit of background about our friend Elan. He served on the IGL, IGLTA board of directors twice. He currently serves as the IGLTA ambassador to Latin America. He claims he has more than 20 years promoting Peru to the LGBTQ community and more than 35 years in the travel and tourism trade. But I'm thinking that he must be drinking from the fountain of youth at Machu Picchu every time he goes because he doesn't look like that he could have been in the business that long. But he's a good friend. Many of us have traveled with, with Elon before and we're very happy for his support and to have him here with us today. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Elizabeth, who's going to start us off um, with her presentation and telling us more about Prom Peru. So Elizabeth, over to you. Sure. Thank you, Clark. Thank you for the intro. And yes, I'll start uh, my presentation. Just bear with me a moment. OK, let's go. Well, I should start by thanking thanking you, Clark, and, and my good friend, Ilan, for the kind invitation. And, you know, that I have the pleasure of coming into your home offices to talk to you about my country. So my job today is to make you aware of what sets Peru apart from other destinations and the reason why you should offer it to your clients when they're ready to book. And I want to start by saying that during these strange times, our authorities have been working closely by the private sector, our suppliers, hotels, restaurants, CMCs, to implement and test safety processes that ensure the health and well-being of our visitors and our people. So, as a tourism board, we promote the country overall, but what you're seeing is uh, some of the destinations where we have a stronger focus due to the level of infrastructure, services, as well as connectivity, and a number of attractions. So this is Lima, Lima, where your clients will be coming in from their international flights. And this is a city that offers extraordinary range of sensations, colors and flavors. Uh, travelers can visit the impressive cathedral, fly over the ocean, enjoy a photogenic uh, sunset or savor and match cuisine. One visit will never be enough 
Lima is filled with colonial era reaches and is the only South American uh, capital that faces the sea. And it is hailed as the gastronomic um, capital of America. So these are some pictures. And Lima, of course, has a very, very interesting night scene, as well as Cusco, which is the destination that we are now going to. This is just a one, a short flight, 75 minutes flight from Lima to, to Cusco. And due to, you know, Cusco high altitude, it is over 11,000 feet, we always recommend to proceed directly to the Sacred Valley, which is one and a half hours by car and located at a lower altitude and with a temperate climate. For years, the Sacred Valley was just the gateway to Machu Picchu and it's, but it has so many, you know, um, cultural and natural attractions that now are, are noticed. I'm very happy to see how this has changed. And I, I am grateful for all these, uh, you know, all the tour operators that we were preaching, you know, go first to the Sacred Valley. And, and now I see that almost everybody's doing that. Um, this is one of the most intriguing places that I know in, 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 in the Sacred Valley, which is the Morai, what we call the agricultural lab dating from Incan times. And next to it sits one of the best restaurants in Peru, in my opinion, Mil, M-I-L. So you're, if you're in a Sacred Valley, you shouldn't miss it. Another place I love is the Mata Salpans. This has been in operation for over 500 years. These are shallow pools filled with salt water that when evaporating leave behind crystallized salt, pink salt. The whole community works the flats. This is a tradition dating from Incan times where community work was the norm. After a couple of days in the Circuit Valley, though I will take you know, one more. When I go to the valley, it's so hard to move. You know, I, I just want to stay there for, for a week. So if you've been there for some days, visiting the towns, I mean, you can choose like, you know, Chinchero for a crash course in textiles, or Yantaitambo to exercise by climbing the fortress, or shopping in the Pisax market. Well, your body has adapted now to the altitude and you're ready to visit Machu Picchu, which is located incidentally at the lower altitude and the valley. To get to Machu Picchu, you can do it in style with a train, and I'm, I'm sure Erica will be will be uh, talking about it. Or, you know, take the, once you're in Machu Picchu Pueblo, you can take the bus up the mountain, or if you're very uh, fit, you can just climb it. Or you can hike the Inca Trail in full, or just a part of it. Now, I'm not going to say anything about Machu Picchu, except that it is an architectural jewel and that everyone experienced it in a, in a totally different way. But I, I just love it. And I, I was there, um, when was that? I was in last October, incidentally, when, with, uh, you know, Erica and, and her team and, and because they, they, they had a new product. So that was my, my last time in Machu Picchu. But after visiting uh, Machu Picchu, you will be returning to Cusco. This is the ancient capital of the Incan Empire and without doubt the most important destination in Peru. This year, it was voted again as the world's best city in the Mexico and South America category by readers of the Travel and Leisure magazine, among others, you know, Cusco always gets all, all the, the awards. The city has impressive archeological complexes, palaces and temples dating from Incan times, and rich colonial buildings that have been constructed on top. Visitors can explore the Coricancha, the most important temple of the Incan Empire, and any other Bar Andean Baroque buildings from the colonial period, like the cathedral or the church of um, the Company of Christ. Or if you have a morning free or an afternoon, you can visit Andahuaylillas, which is in the southern valley of Cusco, and admire the cathedral, which is dubbed the Andean Sistine Chapel, San Pedro de Andahuaylí. Yes, this is what you're seeing now. In Cusco, my advice is to walk as much as you can and, and remember that you would be acclimatized by then after your stays in, in the Sacred Valley. And get lost in its narrow streets, discovering small shops and galleries, lovely bars and restaurants. One of my favorite spots in Cusco is Chicholina. This is a restaurant 
has a bar that's bustling with energy and has a couple of seats near a small balcony that for me are the most romantic spots in town. Whenever I go to Cusco, I have to, I have to go there. I have to sit there and just, you know, take it calmly and look. This is very just just almost across the 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 Belmont the Belmont Hotel. Now, if you are in the retail therapy, beware because there are so many handicrafts from alpaca garments to silver jewelry and works of art, especially if you walk the San Blas district. Now from Cusco, we're gonna go uh, to Puno, and this is a short fly away from Cusco and can be accessed, wow, fantastically by train uh, with Belmont, of course. And the city is located at the shores of Lake Titicaca. This is the highest navigable lake in the world at an altitude over 12,000 feet. But no worries, because you have acclimatized a already since visited in Cusco. This is blue skies, a magnificent lake. And this is the place, you know, we're, we're planning. My, my last trip was in March when I, I went to um, Canada. I was in Vancouver. And I am, you know, for all these months planning, where am I going, you know, as soon as we can. And, and this is my destination. This is the place where I want to be with this fantastic uh, body of water, with, with these blue skies, with all, you know, all the places that we can trek to that we can you know from colonial temples to ancient uh praying sites uh sitting in my room with a book on hand just you know absorbing the energy of 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 this uh lake and another part that i enjoy is the exploration uh to the communities you know that are open and willing to share with you their their heritage and this is, you know, Taquile, where I will go and, and visit this family. And uh, they, they do fantastic weaving that have been, has been included in the UNESCO heritage of the humanity list. And I enjoy so much a meal of quinoa, you know, quinoa soup with these potatoes and cheese and, and, and talking and, and, you know, this very simple life. But, you know, it's, it's fantastic. Another, another thing that I enjoy from, from, Puno is their festivity. These people celebrate so much. This is one of the most important celebrations they have each February, and it's the Candelaria Virgin. And this is just one of the over 3,000 festivities that, that we have in Peru. I mean, every little town will be celebrating, you know, their, their patron saints. This, um, this festivity fuses the uh, Catholic traditions and symbolic elements of the Andean world. And one of my team members take takes part in the parades and the colorful parades every year in devotion to the Virgin, whether it rains or shines. I mean, she is there. It is fantastic. You know, this, this feeling of, of celebration and, and, you know, whatever happens, she'll, she'll be there. So I'm going to take you now a little bit following um, Belmont's <laughs> Andean Explorer, um, you know, route to Arequipa. Well, you can you can also fly from from Arequipa, from I mean, to Arequipa, from Lima or from Cusco. Always short flights. Most flights are you know under under the hour. And this is Peru's second larger city, surrounded by volcanoes with white uh, buildings made of this volcanic stone called Cr. And the city downtown is also placed under UNESCO World Heritage site list. Has baroque churches and mansions from the colonial colonial period. But this is the jewel, the Santa Catalina Monastery, a city within a city, splendid architecture and harboring, uh, you know, impressive places of art. It is ideal to stop and take in its, its peaceful atmosphere. But also, you know, if you want to be active, well, four hours uh, from Arequipa is the Colca Valley and the Colca Canyon. And this is one of the deepest in earth twice as deep as the, Col as the Grand Canyon. An excellent place for adventure, trekking, horseback riding, or whitewater rafting, but also to rest and relax in a natural paradise. And uh, I know I know, Erica will be speaking, you know, a great place to, to relax is Las, Las Casitas. And it, this is also the habitat for the majestic condor, the sacred Indian bird whose wing span is, is, can read uh, can reach up to over three three uh, meters. 
condors are often seen early in the morning at La Cruz del Condor, soaring high into the sky before gliding down to find food. And it, it, it's, you know, beautiful thing to, to watch them. So I, I want to end this presentation by mentioning two spots in the Peruvian rainforests that, you know, make it possible to have this nature immersion. Iquitos is one of them. And this is, you know, Iquitos is really in my heart. This is on Peru's northern Amazon and the gateway to the mighty Amazon River. And what do I enjoy? It's, you know, it's the intimate river cruising that allows to, um, you know, have these close encounters with the uh, with pink dolphins or, you know, having adventures like Piranha Fisher. And, and they, you know, they become a, a memory to share. To me, Iquitos is the most, uh, like, you know, strange or, or different a city in, in Peru. Whenever I travel, it's, it, you know, gets to you such a relaxed uh, place, such a, you know, it's a place to enjoy. Enjoy nature, enjoy the regional within, which is fantastic. Another uh, place uh, that I also recommend, especially for those who, enjoy bird watching is Puerto Maldonado, very close to Cusco, barely uh, 35 or 40 minutes flight from, from Cusco. So if you are there, just jump on and, and have this nature immersion in the region, whether you go to the National Reserve of Tambopata or the National Park of Manu, both are a bird in paradise and also, you know, a fantastic experience to get into the nature and understand uh, what is at risk if we don't do some changes in the way we live. I've visited both of them and I, you know, it, it, it's fantastic experience just to be surrounded by nature. So um, now I just, you know, want to thank you for, for again, the IGLTA for its kind invitation to let me open this uh, presentation. And I encourage you to, to check on our trade sites and, you know, peruagent.com to learn about Peru and to look for resources to help you sell Peru. And if you have any questions, that's our um, our email addresses there. And I'll, I'll, I'll love to help you in anything that you need uh, about Peru tourism. And thank you again. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. It's a great honor to have Prom Peru. I've been uh, doing this for 20 years and it is the first time that Prom Peru ac actively started to reach the LGBTQ plus market. And I was part of the first uh, series of webinars last year with, with, uh, with the consultant that from Peru hired. And we are truly honored that finally the government is getting involved reaching the market. So again, Elizabeth, I know that you've been involved. We've been talking for years and great pleasure to be always close to you and to from Peru. Now we have Belmont Hotels. Erika Toru is the director of sales for Belmont Hotels. Thanks to Belmont Hotels, uh, Peru is where it is today. Uh, when I was young, there was hardly any, any infrastructure for luxury travelers. And it is since Belmont arrived, and I'm guessing that it's almost 25 years ago when they arrived to Cusco that uh, Peru became a hot spot for the luxury traveler worldwide. So with six beautiful and very charming special hotels and two of the best trains in America, please, uh, my friend, Erika Toro, who we do business all the time. And I'm also proud to call her my friend. Thank you, Erika. Thank you, Ilan. Well, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us uh, in this webinar, and thank you for the opportunity to talk a little more about uh, Peru. Well, I'm Erika Toro, Director of Sales for the Hotels in Peru. Um, Belmont, as a part of LGBTQ, uh, belief on diversity and inclusion, and of course, we welcome, celebrate, and include all of you in our hotel. And if you can see in this uh, picture, uh, we cover all the southern part of the of the country, you know, with a beautiful or historic buildings and uh, exclusive trains, which made you to discover a little more of a luxury uh, journey through Peru. You no, know, Peru has a lot to offer, and I would like just to 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 follow uh, this journey through our hotels. Well, let's start with Lima. 
as Elizabeth mentioned, Lima, well, it's a gastronomic city, it's the capital located in front of the ocean. And the Hotel de Belmo Miraflores Park is in the Hote district. Indeed, it's Miraflores, walking distance to the main entertainment places, bars, restaurants, shopping. As Lima, it's, it's a gastronomic uh, city. Well, the, the, the food for us is very important, especially for the Limeños or Peruanos. And we have Tragaluz, where we mix uh, the art and, and, and the food and, and social event, and, and always is, something is happening in, in Tragaluz. You can enjoy our exclusive suite with a, a fantastic view of the ocean and also part of the view of the, of the city. We have different activities to, to enjoy at the hotel. Uh, you, if you are uh, an early bird, you can enjoy the, the sunrise and take the scooters or the bicycle from the hotel and go around the Malecon and, and, and see the, the, the little pieces of art that, that we have around from different Peruvian artists. Or you cannot miss the ceviche class, especially in, in the summer season with the, a beautiful sunset just in front of the hotel. Then, if we travel to Cusco, what we suggest is going first to the Sacro Valley because of the altitude. So it, it has less altitude than Cusco City, and it's the best way to acclimatate or adjust just to the altitude. So we have this beautiful small hotel, the Belmont Hotel Rio Sagrado, is located in the shore of the Urubamba River, surrounded of gardens, mountains, nature. So it's the best place just to disconnect and start to connect with the with the with what the nature and the valley has to offer no we have all these um the the, the 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 rooms with private terrace so you can wake up early in the morning and do some uh meditation with just um hearing the noise of the the sound of the of the river so in the sacro valley has a lot to offer from like some yoga lessons or some retreats or, or some uh, shaman ceremonies or, or the mystic uh, like uh, weddings. Or if you are more active, you can do some rafting, some horseback riding, or doing a, a, a walking, active walking up to the, to the salt fields of Maras and following by a, a breakfast picnic in Morai, you know, one of the archaeological sites, a beautiful archaeological site of the hotel, or just enjoy the valley and know the, the, the things that has to, to offer. From the Sacro Valley, uh, you can take the, the, the train to, to Machu Picchu. And, and this is not just a train, this is a luxury experience that takes you to discover uh, the citadel of Machu Picchu. It's an amazing journey, uh, three hours and a half from Cusco, two hours from the Sacro Valley, included all the food, the beverages, entertainment on board. Really, it's a, a, a nice experience uh, on board of the Belmont Haida Mingan. And we, we just recently launched the, the one of our uh, private car, which is a royal car. Um, this is, a, you can rent a, this, this car up to, um, for a group up to 12 passengers. So especially in this moment that the people is looking for something more uh, exclusive, no, and private. And this is one of the way to, to, to travel. And once you arrive in, in, in Machu Picchu or in, in the town in Aguascalientes where the train station is located, I love this picture because you can see the zigzag road that I uh, have to take to go to visit the, the citadel. And if you see where the mouse is, this is our hotel. So there's just the citadel and our hotel. And when you uh, think of Machu Picchu or just once in the life, it, this is a, the, the correct place to stay. No, the hotel is a small a lot, as we call, with uh, just 31 rooms, including the food and various special uh, places where you can have private uh, breakfast or lunch or enjoy some of the activities. Or what about to wake up early uh, in the morning, take a, a, a energetic breakfast at the terrace in the in the hotel, look in the sunrise, and then go inside Machu Picchu and climb Huayna Picchu. And then you can come back to the hotel, relax after the excursion, and enjoy some of the treatments uh, outdoor, looking one of the mountains, which is Huayna Picchu. So the hotel has beautiful views to 
to see here, no? But what is most important is that you are next to the Citadel. And then when you come back to Cusco City, we have two historic buildings here. One is the Belmont Hotel Monasterio, which is the icon in Hotel in Cusco. It was a older monastery from the 16th century, so we keep the original architecture here and with all this classic style with all the colonial influence from the same century and for me stay at monasteries like Estero Museo because it show you a, a, a Cusco of the past you know of the history from those days one of the the, the experience that you cannot miss is our opera dinners uh, for those that enjoy this this experience it's amazing with the best soprano in the city and there are different things to do at the hotel, enjoy the art tour, which is original from the Escuela de Arte Cusqueña, or the first light experience that is a walking tour up to the San Cristobal uh, Hill, where you can see the sunrise from the from all the Cusco City here. And for those ones that are looking a little more contemporary, we have exactly next door the Belmont Palacio Las Arenas, that was an, a reformer convent from the 18th century, but we decided to do it in a different way. With only suites, with the first swimming pool at door in Cusco, with a bathroom service, all the suites are oxygenated, so that helps with the altitude sickness. So this hotel show you a Cusco of nowadays. No, um, and and the hotel monastery show you a cusco of the past. So we have the two different hotels, but it depends on what the clients are looking. No, so it's it's important to to offer the correct uh, hotel to stay. No, there are different uh, things to do. We have some yoga. We have a spa with five room and room. We have, of course, the first flight experience or the pottery classes here at Nazarenas. And after all this trip in, in, in Cusco, Sacro Valley, Machu Picchu, we might you do uh, discover a little more. And what I'm about to do it in the, in the unique and exclusive uh, sleeper train in South America, the Belmont Andean Explorers. This is the train that crossed the, the Peruvian Andes and, and is a different experience. Take you to discover two more destinations. One is Puno, where the Lady Titicaca, and then the other one is Arequipa City, where the closest attraction is the Coca Canyon. The train has the 35 cabin row with private bathroom that always uh, people ask me. And it's a great experience, included on the pool, entertainment, the excursions, the visit to the archaeological sites. We visit the, the islands in the Lady Titicaca, and we have uh, a land where we share with the communities here in the in the Taquile Islands. So it's a great, great experience on the three days to nights on board. And when you arrive to Arequipa or before to arrive to Arequipa, you can disembark from the train also to visit the Colca Canyon. And the Colca Canyon is is one of the deepest canyons in the world with uh, a lot of uh, nature, you no know, uh, wildlife, and it's where you can see the fly of the condor because this is natural habitat and where we have the beautiful Belmont Las Casitas. These 20 casitas are located on the valley with amazing view. It's so relaxed. Each casita has a private terrace and plush pool. And this is the perfect place where you can finish all your trip in Peru. And, and of course, you can enjoy uh, some horseback riding, feeding the baby alpacas, um, fishing some trout. But we um, offer the breakfast with the condors where we set up a breakfast early in the morning in one of the point of view in the Mirador. And you are taking the breakfast, waiting to see uh, the fly of the condors in this place. So, or you can enjoy just your casita and your plunge pool at the hotel and, and finish your trip in, in Peru. So I invite you to come to, to visit Peru and, and to, enjoy, um, to enjoy the country in a, in a luxury way. Well, thank you very much. I will pass to, to, to Ilan. Thank you very much. And now it is uh, time for me to present about, talk, share with you a little bit about Cultur Peru. And that is what we do uh, different than probably other tour companies.
So Cultura Peru, first of all, I'm very proud to present you for the first time ever our new LGBTQ plus uh, logo that uh, this is our new image after 63 years and we have uh, created uh, this logo especially for this presentation and we'll be using it from now on whenever we reach the market. It took me 20 years to come with a very colorful rainbow logo and I'm happy that it's here. Um, first of all, thank you to IGLTA, to Prom Peru, to Belmont Hotels for their uh, support. It is not only a support today, it is, a, it is support that comes for many, many years. We've been working, promoting Peru strongly. And, you know, it, it, it is not easy because we compete with many other destinations. Peru is one of those destinations that you need to visit and see it yourself in order to fall in love like I did when I started traveling in Peru. So I invite you all in the future, in the near future, to come and explore Peru with us. A little bit about me. Uh, I've been, as Clark said, in the travel industry for 35 years. I studied as a telephone operator in Jerusalem as a college student, but I said, I'll answer the phone. That's probably all I can do right now because I spoke a few languages thanks to my family background, but I started at the best hotel in the Middle East, the King David, and that's where I started my career. After a few weeks, I knew that I was going to, to stay in the travel and tourism industry for life. So I'm very honored to be part of the travel family for 35 years. Uh, I work for hotels. I work for U.S. Airlines in Peru, and I've been doing LGBT travel to Peru for the last 20 years. I joined the family of Cultur Peru four years ago in 2016. I have been involved with the IGLTA for many, many years, since actually year 2000, so it's been 20 years. I was, uh, we hosted uh, two symposiums in, in Peru, one in Lima, one in Cusco. I serve on the board for two terms, and for the last 12 years, I have the privilege of being uh, the Latin American Regional Ambassador for the IGLTA giving support to any member in Latin America that wants to start or needs any advice how to reach the LGBT market worldwide. In 2011, I was awarded Ambassador of the Year. 2018, all global ambassadors were uh, complimented for our volunteer work as we devote a lot of hours to the association. And now we have a few friendly faces in this photo and I would like to talk to you about Culture Peru. What is that we do different? First of all, we hosted a beautiful fun trip with Belmont and Latam Airlines in November last year. That was my last time I visited uh, Machu Picchu. And as you can see, this is as beautiful as it gets. This photo was taken from my phone. So it, this is exactly what you get to see when you uh, visit Machu Picchu. Cultur Peru is a family-owned business. We've been in business for 63 years, third generation, and there are three young and energetic brothers that handle the business today. And I'm again honored to be part of the Kultur family for the last four years, having their full support. Kultur Peru is committed to the LGBT market. We've done a lot of different uh, strategies and efforts to reach the market, and we are very passionate with what we do. So the company is fully committed to the market. We always try to exceed with what we do. We do have a 24-7 concierge service. Our operations never stop in Peru. We have multilingual teams knowing each geographic region in the world so we can take care of your clients in the best way possible. Culture Peru is about experiences. And I always say there are many, many tour companies that can show you the best that Peru has to offer, but it is about the experiences and which ways that you create the tour that makes us different. Uh, because actions speak louder than words, I would like to share some of our accolades from 2019. We are top producers for Hotel B, a beautiful 20 suite Reliance Chateau Hotel. Uh, this hotel is an art museum in a Belle Epoque mansion from the 20s, and it is one of 
my favorite hotels in Barranco neighborhood, the Bohemian neighborhood in uh, Lima. We are also top producer for Circa, another Relean Chateau property in Peru with only 11 suites. In Arequipa, Arequipa, as we mentioned before, is the gateway to the Colca Canyon. We are second in sales for Belmont hotels, and we need to keep in mind that we are a truly boutique small tour company, but we focus our efforts with our greatest partners, and being rather small and boutique, we are number two in sales for Belmont hotels in Peru. We are also top producer for Explora. Explora is a all-inclusive outdoor and soft adventure resort and spa in the Sacred Valley. You probably know Explora from Chile and Argentina, and, and this is a beautiful product for the outdoor enthusiasts. We are number three with the two most beautiful trains in Latin America run by Belmont, the Hiram Bingham, which is the right way and my favorite way to visit uh, Cusco and Machu Picchu and the Belmont and the Explorer, exploring as Eric mentioned, uh, Cusco, Lake Titicaca and Arequipa and the Colca Canyon. We are also top producers for Amazon Aria from Aqua Expeditions. This is a beautiful floating uh, boutique hotel with 16 suites in the northern uh, part of the Amazon in Peru out of Iquitos. It is very important to highlight that here in the Amazon is where you get the most secluded and beautiful sceneries that you will find in Peru. Now that probably our clients will be looking for seclusion and privacy, the Amazon is a perfect gateway for that. And I would like to highlight why Peru. Peru is a very dear country for me. I was born in Peru and I've been promoting Peru for the last 20 years. In this uh, slide, we cut Peru as a cake in order to understand why Peru is such a rich destination. To the left, we have the Pacific Ocean with the humble current coming through the coast of Peru with the richest seafood and fish we will find in South America. The very narrow beige stretch that we see is the coast of Peru, which is a desert. Nobody knows that Lima and the major cities of Peru are on a desert. The Sechura Desert is the continuation of the Atacama Desert in Chile, driest desert on earth. Then we have the Andes Mountains, which is the longest mountain chain in the world and the second highest mountain range in the world after the Himalayas. It is important to, to point out that the cities such as Lima and many other major cities are able to survive because of the eternal snow peak mountain rivers that go from the Andes peak mountains to the ocean, because as we know, with water, all the civilizations were able to develop and grow. From the Amazon that we share with Brazil, we get to see the largest lung of the world. 20% of the oxygen in the world comes from the Peruvian and Brazilian Amazon. We do share the Amazon with some other countries, and it is important to highlight that Cusco is in the high plateau of the Andes Mountains, but Machu Picchu is at the very beginning of the Amazon jungle in a geographical floor called the Cloud Forest. Peru is an amazing destination for outdoor activities. The landscapes from the desert to the mountains to the jungle give a beautiful scenery on a daily basis. Peru is one of the six cradles of the civilization in the world. When I grew up, we learned that Peru was, Peru's history was only 2,400 years old. We discovered a few years ago that Peru civilization with Caral, that we see in the photo, three hours northwest of Lima, is the oldest settlement in the Americas with more than 5,000 years. So this puts Peru's history as old as China, Mesopotamia, India, Egypt, and the main cultures of the world. Peru is a paradise for outdoor activities. 
everywhere we go in Peru, there is all, always something outdoor and self adventure to do from mountain biking to wide river rafting to horseback riding to hiking and kayaking. Uh, it's a paradise for people that are looking for the outdoor activities. And that is why Peru is such a rich destination for nature lovers. The Inca Empire uh, conquered in the 15th century many, many, many uh, pre-Inca or pre-Columbian civilizations. And that is why Peru has today one of the richest uh, cultural heritages in the world. Some of the destinations in Peru, of course, I have to be biased, Lima, my hometown, uh, facing the Pacific Ocean. Lima is a pretty large city built on a cliff overlooking the Pacific Ocean and its capital of Peru. Lima is a bustling city full of cuisine, nightlife, art. And one of the phenomenons that we've been living in the last few years is the gastronomy of Peru. We need to keep in mind that Peru's gastronomy comes from the indigenous Peruvians the Spanish and the Moorish conquistadors, the African, Japanese, and Chinese slaves. And the last few years, we've learned also about Amazonian uh, fruits, fish, and vegetables. So the gastronomy in Peru is extremely rich. We are very proud that two of the top 10 restaurants in the world are located in Lima, Central from Chef Virgilio Martinez, offers a 17-step tasting menu that explores the different altitudes of Peru from the deep ocean to more than 15,000 feet above sea level. Central also, uh, if you're not interested in the 17-step tasting menu, offers a resto bar and offers a more casual restaurant as well. People travel to Peru from around the world just to go to Central showcasing the diversity of our food. Number 10 in the world, it's Maido restaurant with a beautiful Peruvian Japanese fusion influence. And our ocean, as I mentioned before, brings the most beautiful shellfish, seafood and fish in the world. And that's why the Japanese cuisine is so big in Peru. And Maido number 10 in the world, it's a clear example of the gastronomy in Peru. And because we, I wanted to share with you some of the experiences that we offer, we do get to visit with Chef Penelope Alzamora, a market. We walk with her exploring the different things that we are going to purchase in order to go to her home, overlooking the Pacific Ocean, cook with her and have lunch in her family table. I've been in Penelope's home when the husband arrives from work, the kids come from surfing or from school, and this is one of the most beautiful experiences that you can enjoy in Lima. As well, in Lima, we have a culinary experience with Chef Pedro Miguel Schiaffino, who's known as the Jungle Chef. Pedro Miguel has been known as one of the top 10 young chefs in the world, and in the second floor of one of his top restaurants, he has a lab that sits up to 14 people. We were honored to host the Belmont LGBTQ plus uh, advisory board about three years ago with Pedro Miguel. And it was one of the most beautiful culinary experiences that I've ever had in Peru. Lima, a great city for art scene and modern art. We have amazing world-class museums. Some of my favorites are the Larco Museum, top 25 hotels in the world. And it is a must stop before you travel anywhere in Peru because it teaches you everything about the history of Peru. We can need to keep in mind again that we are learning about 5,000 years of history when we explore Peru. One of the highlights in Bohemian Barranco, the arts neighborhood, is Mario Testino Museum. Mario Testino is Peruvian. He lived in London most of his life. He's very well known for the portraits of Lady D, the royal family, Kate Moss, Naomi Campbell, and celebrities all over the world. Mario Testino decided to spend more time in Lima and open a beautiful modern museum. We have access to many of these private collections on a private basis. So, it is just important to know what is that we need to create for you in order to visit wonderful 
collections of art from pre-Columbian, Inca, and contemporary. From Lima, we go to Cusco, we arrive to the Sacred Valley. Sacred Valley is far lower than Cusco, is the countryside of Cusco. Beautiful scenery, beautiful archeological and natural sites. Sacred Valley is where we can explore soft adventure activities for family all ages. I love that in the Sacred Valley, you could have uh, parents and kids, families and friends from all ages enjoying activities outdoors. Again, after an amazing day exploring the Sacred Valley of the Incas, we have access to haciendas, farm to table homes, and picnic lunches around lakes. One of my favorite visit when we hosted uh, last November the Belmont LGBT farm trip to Peru was visiting a local community. We visit these communities and we live with them for hours. We eat with them. We learn how they cook, how they dance, how they sing, how they live on a daily basis. Peru being a very spiritual country is an uh, amazing place for a shaman ceremony. The Pachamama, Mother Earth, is one of the biggest gods in the Inca culture, and it comes from hundreds of that thousand years ago. And a Pachamama ceremony, paying tribute to Mother Earth, is a must when you visit Cusco and Peru. I wanted to include today the Rainbow Mountain because it was a social media sensation in the last few years. Vinicunca is the name of the mountain, the mountain of seven colors or Rainbow Mountain. It is a full day hike. You get to see these beautiful color mountains that are up to hiking up to 15,000 uh, feet above sea level. So this is an experience I have not done myself. Um, planning to get in shape good enough to go to the Rainbow Mountain. Besides the famous Vinicunca Mountain, there are other alternative mountains. Our favorite is Palcoyo Rainbow Mountain. It is far less visited, and this is how we like to highlight uh, travel in Peru. Go to the of the beaten path places, less visited places, visit the sites when the, right, when the time is right in order to avoid crowds and other tourists. Some of the social media sensations in Peru as well that I wanted to feature today is the Sky Lodge. These are three glass pots hanging on a cliff of the Sacred Valley of the Incas, where you can go to sleep if you are very adventurous, or you can just go for lunch, and you need to either rappel, go via ferrada, or via zip lining in order to reach the glass pots of Sky Lodge. My favorite way to reach Machu Picchu is the Harren Bingham Belmont train, but of course the most famous hike in the world is the Inca Trail. The Inca Trail can take from four to three to two to one day, and it is a true amazing experience. There's nothing like reaching Machu Picchu through the Sun Gate, the real original door that the Incas used to arrive to Machu Picchu. The Inca Trail can be as adventurous or as luxurious as you can. You hike for about six to eight hours a day. And after the Inca Trail, we reach Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu is one of the new seven wonders of the world. Machu Picchu was built in the 15th century. It was never discovered by the Spaniards conquistadors, but we do not know why it was abandoned by the Incas before the Spaniards even arrived. Machu Picchu is one of the most beautiful places in America and it is certainly the most important archeological site in Peru. Machu Picchu is a place that deserves at least two days. The first day I like to explore Machu Picchu, spend three, four hours with a tour guide, get to know the historic sites of Machu Picchu. And the second day, I always wake up at six in the morning, try to be there as soon as I can, get into Machu Picchu and explore it on my own. There are three hikes that are pretty relevant in Machu Picchu. The Huayna Picchu Mountain, which is a young mountain that we get to see on the left side of the door. We get to hike the mountain all the way up. There are other two very world-renowned hikes called the 
in Tipunco, the Sangate and the Inca Bridge. Machu Picchu is also an amazing destination to just sit, relax and enjoy, meditate and get the true energy that you get in Machu Picchu. Again, Machu Picchu for me is the most interesting and most beautiful archeological site in the Americas. From Machu Picchu, we are already acclimatized to the altitude. We reach the city of Cusco. Cusco, as beautiful as San Miguel Allende in Mexico, as beautiful as Antigua in Guatemala, is for me the most beautiful colonial city in Latin America. And it deserves two or three nights at least. When we are in Cusco, we discover different archaeological sites, such as Sacsayhuaman, the Coricancha, or Sun Temple. And one of my favorite spots that we get to see in Peru is the San Pedro market of Cusco. Here we get to see the variety of fruits and produce that comes from farmers close and far to the market for people to go and enjoy. It is important to know that the quinoa comes from Peru, the white giant corn comes from the Sacred Valley. And in Peru, we harvest almost 4,000 type of potatoes, but only 300 type of potatoes. So we are proud to say that we have a potato for every day of the year. About experiences in Peru, this is a beautiful uh, cocktail that we had uh, at the San Francisco Bell Tower dating from the 1600s. We climbed all the way up to the Bell Tower and we had a beautiful cocktail party where we hosted our Belmont farm trip last November. This is an amazing experience that cannot be replicated anywhere else in the country. As well, in Peru, we have access to the Museum of Pre-Columbian Art in Cusco and we go to the Gold Room for a gold dinner. This is an amazing way to end an amazing trip to Cusco and Peru. But it is important to highlight that besides the six, seven, eight, or nine nights that we spent between Lima, the Sacred Valley, Machu Picchu, and Cusco, there is so much more to see in Peru. In Peru, I would love always to include at least two or three nights in each of these destinations in order to showcase the best of what we have to offer. The Amazon jungle, either in Puerto Maldonado, 25 minutes flight from Peru, or in Iquitos in the northern Amazon, where we get to sail on the luxury river boats. Lake Titicaca, the highest navigable lake in the world. This is an example of sociology at its best. These, the Uros Islands are hand weaved by the commoners, and this is where they live. So they live in the islands, they build themselves. In Lake Titicaca, we always get to see the Taquile community that has been hardly touched by civilization. And interesting enough, women do the hard work of farming and men do the easier way of life, uh, handcrafting and doing textiles. So this Society in Lake Titicaca teaches us how is that old Peruvians used to live. Three hours south of Lima, we have the National Park of Paracas, where we get to see more than 100,000 birds and tens of thousands of sea lions and the Peruvian humble penguin, which is rather small. And this is an amazing destination to end a beautiful trip to Peru as we can stay for two or three days on the desert, by the ocean, and get to explore the Nazca Lines or the Ballestas Islands. And to end my beautiful trip of Peru, we have the Colca Canyon, which is only four hours from Arequipa. It offers the most beautiful scenery I've seen in the country. It's hardcore soft adventure at its best, and this is where we get to see the largest flying bird in the world, the condor. And again, I would love to thank you all for being here today with us. Let us in a few minutes showcase the best of Peru and thank the IGLTA from Peru and Belmont. Thank you, Ilan. Thank you, Erica. Thank, thank you, for you us. I think everybody is ready to hop on a plane as soon as we can and go to Peru. 
Um, I saw a lot of smiling faces and a lot of nodding heads throughout the presentation. Um, so people have either been there and experienced a lot of what you all shared with us or they're eager to do that. So um, Kristen, I don't know if we still have time. Do we want to open it up for a few questions? We can. I mean, um, if everyone you know, wants to stay on the call. If you can't stay on the call, we understand. That's fine. It is noon. Um, but yeah, we do like to open it up to Q&A at the end. Excellent. So Babs here, I can say something. <laughs> Absolutely, Babs. We're waiting on you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I know. You'd probably think that the cat got my tongue if I didn't. Ilan, thank you so much for this wonderful coordination of this wonderful presentation and excellent photographs that we can also show to our clients to get them as excited as we all are. My question to you as the tour operator, so can you give us a little bit of your uh, COVID-19 protocol that you're all doing? Yes, the uh, interesting question, Babs. Thank you so much for asking. The protocols are right now uh, discussed by the government. I do know that hotels, restaurants, tour companies will comply with whatever the international uh, government, uh, different bodies are requesting. I am not sure that we have everything finalized yet, but I do know that in the next few weeks, we should be able to open following the international protocols needed. I don't know if Elizabeth uh, as from Peru knows a little bit more about what are the protocols that are going to be followed uh, once we open borders for international travelers? Yes, Silan. Um, as I said, we are working very closely. We have worked very closely with uh, you know all the all the sectors, all the associations, and in fact, that I know all the protocols are like hundred, almost a hundred percent ready. So uh, we don't have them yet in English. But there are some protocols that are, you know, ready. I can, I can follow. I can um, send you that link. But they're still in Spanish, so we're, we're working on having them translated, and um, we are also working closely with, uh, you know, a WTTC to see how can we, you know, get those certification, those uh, stamps, also with other um, associations to have stamp like the Bureau Veritas. So, you know, it's it's a very active and something that we want to make sure is that every region is complying, you know, not just the hotels and and the tour operators, but every element of this chain of services needs to have all protocols in place and tested. So that's that's something uh, a work that the government has been doing, not from Peru because we are just the communication, the promotion body, but we are part of the, you know, the ministry and we know that they are, you know, working very hard to make sure that every element in this chain is completely, um, you know, uh, safe, safe for, for our people and for the visitors. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any more questions, guys? I actually have a comment, not a question. And Please. first of all, I just, want, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you to IGLTA for giving us the opportunity to dream about travel to Peru. It's like you guys just made my day uh, knowing that there is what this amazing and unique destination. And of course, this destination cannot be done without the support of DMCs like Coltour and, of course, Peru as a destination, the con I mean, the country has done so many things. I'm actually from Venezuela, and I wish Venezuela would do the same. I mean, to promote this, you know, the beauty of South America. Having said that, there was uh, when Erica started her presentation about Belmont, there was something very specific that I wanted to highlight, which is about welcome, included, and celebrated. When you go to any destination and you feel that you're welcome, no matter who you are, no matter what you are, you're included and you are celebrated, when you go back home, that trip is unbelievable, it's amazing. And that growth that you are gonna have as a human being is extremely important. And having said that, when you're traveling as an LGBTQ plus traveler, like my case, I've been to Peru five times, and in different stages of my life, and it's been always 
an amazing opportunity for me to connect with the people. I have never felt harassed like I could have felt in another destination. I felt safe. But what is most important for all of us that were in the industry is to understand that you need to choose who your suppliers are. If you're going to have your client going to Peru, make sure that you take them to companies, DMCs or destinations that they are complying with LGBTQ plus guidelines, because that really allows you as a travel advisor or as a traveler to make sure that that trip is memorable. And that is something for us extremely important at Belmont, making sure that everybody is welcome, included, and celebrated. Diversity and inclusion is everything nowadays. And it's not only about being gay or being a lesbian. It's also about being an African-American. It's also being a woman covered by itself or being Muslim. So when you celebrate diversity and you choose the right suppliers, that allows you to really understand the destination. You feel safe. And of course, having a DMC like Cold Tour, like we couldn't do what they do. So that and the destination as well, it's like a perfect trifecta of three components that made this unique destination happen. So that was my comment. And I'm sorry that you know that I didn't have a question, but I just wanted to highlight us as LGBTQ travelers that it's a safe destination and it's a place where we must send our clients. It's just amazing and beautiful. Thanks. Yes. Thank you, Elio. Yeah, and Elio, I would just thank you for your comments. And I would just like to congratulate Prompur, Prom, uh, Prom Peru, uh, Belmont, and Cold Tour because um, all three of you are very committed to the LGBTQ community. Um, Erica, don't think it didn't go unnoticed that we saw that you had LGBTQ imagery in your presentation. So congratulations to Belmont for, for that. And I know that that's a direct result of some of the work that you've done with the LGBTQ Advisory Board. Um, congratulations to Elon on your uh, your rainbow logo. After 20 years, you deserve it. And it's a beautiful logo. So congratulations. And Elizabeth, thank you for being uh, per present at the IGLTA convention and for your commitment on behalf of uh, uh, the, the Peruvian government um, for your commitment to the LGBTQ uh, travel market. Okay, guys, once more, thank you all for being here with us, investing one hour in learning about my beautiful country, our beautiful country. Peru very soon will be, will be waiting for all of you. So give us a chance, pay us a visit. Happy New Year tomorrow for the ones who celebrate. Have a great week and let's travel soon. Please, let's travel soon.